good to meet you. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you for being here. I'm glad to be here. Good. That's great. I'm a little bit of an amateur with the video camera, so I'm doing Just my keep best. It steady. He's yeah. a pretty journalist. Yeah. yeah. But one of the things I want to ask you is some people um, are a little uh, surprised when we are having a business conference. We're talking about accounts payable, accounts receivable, finance, automation, and our opening keynote speaker is John Walsh. So how do you um, kind of, uh, you know, tie in the whole business aspect of, I mean, you're, you're a businessman as well. I always just, was. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in, I'm great believer that the private sector is part of the solution. You know, I was a hotel builder before my son was murdered. I was, you know, pretty successful at a young age from Florida. And uh, as I, I've seen in the last 28 years since Adam was murdered that law enforcement can't do it alone and legislators certainly can. And I think a lot of the solutions of problems in America relating to violence are changing the laws through legislation, and I've learned this is a country of 50 little countries, so I'm constantly on the road trying to change state legislation, and with using Florida as a model state, I've had a lot of success in passing laws in Florida. But the private sector has a huge role to play in the volunteerism, and I know this organization does a lot of different uh, volunteer things and that the private sector is part of the solution, that, that government and law enforcement cannot do it alone. And in this huge spike of, you know, violent crime in America, crime overall is down, but violent crime and homicides are way up. And I think Americans have to get together and say this is unacceptable. You know, our cities are being held hostage. Orlando, where you live in, had a 300% spike in homicides in the last couple of years. Chicago is talking about bringing in the National Guard. I think the real solution is to get the citizens involved with more than just paying their mortgage and wondering what the stock of their company is worth. Great. But, but isn't also one of the things that we think resonates so well is that you do an amazing message about uh, overcoming severe adversity to embrace you know, changes in life and, and becoming stronger and better as a result of it. And obviously, I would never compare it to, to some of the things that, that you've experienced, but especially in this past economy, one of the things that we realized is that there's a lot of people hurting out there. And uh, I think you bring a strong message of, hey guys, as bad as it gets, it could be worse. Oh, I, I, I hope so. I, th I mean, I think and try to say to lots of people that, you know, life takes you in some tough situations and, and uh, had a lot of people help me change things and help us get through all the terrible nightmare of Adam being abducted and murdered and then bucking up against systems that were non-responsive and politicians that had their mind on other things and law enforcement agencies that, you know, just didn't uh, do what they needed to do. So I, I hope I send that message. I be, and, and part of my message is that people can help. Lots of people have helped me change laws. And lots of people have helped me change uh, lots of things in this country by saying, hey, I'm a private citizen, I'm a father, I'm a mother, I ought to saddle up here and do something about it. Sure. So, That's Mr. Walsh, from the perspective of a successful businessman and obviously a successful victim's rights advocate, what, what advice would you give to the folks who are members of our organization in terms of affecting change in their organization? Well, I, you know, it, it, it's, it's almost a civics lesson because I remember... I, after Adam was murdered, I was interviewed by a whole group of women journalists in Tampa, in my home state of Florida. And they were saying, well, can someone really make a difference? Can women make a difference? I mean, this is 28 years ago, 27 years ago. And, uh, and I said, well, let me ask you, ladies, in all due respect, do you know who your two U.S. Senators are, who your member of the House of Representatives are, is... Do you know who represents you in Tallahassee, who your state rep and state senator is? Only one woman in the room could actually write him down, and she was a rape victim. She was an anchor woman from the Jacksonville TV station, and she was trying to change the way that women were treated uh, after they'd been victimized. And I said, ladies, it's a civic lesson. You don't even know who represents you. People die all over the world to, in order to vote, and here's an esteemed 
group of women journalists who can't tell me exactly who their legislators are. So how can you affect social change if you don't even pick up that phone or call somebody and say, hey, here's a piece of victims' rights legislation. I mean, that's how the Adam Walsh Act got passed right. three years ago. American citizens forced Congress to do it. You know, so uh, I say to people, yeah, you can make a huge difference. Find out who represents you, mm -hmm. exercise your right to vote, be informed, and uh, and see how your state does. You know, people say to me all the time, I wonder how my sex offender registry works in my county. I wonder how we treat victims of or what, what, I wonder what the sentencing laws are in my state, etc. And you know, every state's different. Florida happens to be kind of a model state because I'm a great believer in Florida citizens settling up to the plate. You know, some states do a horrible job as it relates to treatment of victims and, and you know, pursuing and registering sex offenders, for example. So, so I it? say to people all the time, get informed, you know. Find out what's going on. Find out. And talk to your own kids. You know, people always say to me, "I have no idea what my kids doing on Facebook or, or MySpace." Say so you have every right to mind. You're the parent. Parent up. Parent up. There's the title of the blog. There you go. <laughs> uh, that I heard you. You were also taking uh, America's Most Wanted to Europe now. We we have by the globalization of this. Planet, we have become the world's most wanted. I mean, I do cases with Scotland Yard, with Interpol. I've done in the last year. We caught a guy in Hong Kong, well, in mainland China, and he was ex first extradition from mainland China. This American pedophile, child molester, convicted child molester. We caught a guy in India, and uh, so I've been doing lots of cases in other countries. You know, not just American fugitives but fugitives from other countries who come to America to exploit Americans. So we've been sort of been forced to become the world's most wanted because we do live in a global society. I mean, there are no borders or boundaries. For